Hello everyone, my name is Mara, and today's case is about Alicia Navarro, who was only 14 years old when she went missing from Glendale, Arizona in September of 2019. And just a quick reminder before I get started that I tried to do the best research and get the most accurate information I can for every single case that I cover. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get into today's case. Alicia Christina Navarro was born September 20th of 2004. She was said to be a very sweet girl who loved her family. Alicia lived with her mom, Jessica Nunez, her stepdad, Yvonne, and younger brother and sister in Glendale, Arizona. She went to school at Borgade Catholic High School in Phoenix, Arizona. It also said that she described herself as introverted and shy. Alicia was diagnosed with autism when she was 12 years old. She took many medications because she had a compromised immune system. She also struggled with her anxiety, but she was seeing a therapist to help work through all this. It said that her autism was high-functioning autism, and she enjoyed to be on the same routine every day. She liked to eat the same foods, listen to the same music, and even though it's very hot in Arizona, she felt the most comfortable with a long sleeve on or a sweatshirt on. Socializing was very, very overwhelming for her, so she found it easier to meet friends online. She enjoyed playing Minecraft and Discord. Not long before she went missing, a lot of Alicia's interests changed. Her new interests included comic books, classic rock, and fitness products. She also decided that she wanted to dress a little bit more provocatively and start wearing makeup. Then on the day of September 14th of 2019, Alicia woke up and was having a lot of anxiety. So she asked her mom if she could stay home from school that day. And her mom agreed that that was okay. She understood that Alicia's anxiety probably was just bothering her a lot. And I think that's really great of her mom to let her stay home and just take a personal day because kids, adults, I think we all need that sometimes. So Alicia and her mom spend the day getting McDonald's, which is one of her favorite meals, and they also go and get their eyebrows threaded. They then go to a chocolate shop and then eventually head home. Jessica does mention that Alicia seemed completely fine this day. She seemed happy, and nothing seemed out of the ordinary. Once they're home, Alicia goes to her room and starts playing the games like she does every other night. So honestly, nothing just seemed out of the ordinary about this day. Around 12 a.m., she comes downstairs for a glass of water, and she asks her mom on when she planned on going to bed, and then tells her mom that she loves her, and then heads back upstairs saying that she's going to bed for the night. The next morning, Jessica goes downstairs to make breakfast for the family. It's around 7 a.m. when she notices that the back door is slightly open. So she goes out into their backyard and then notices that there's two chairs pushed up against the back fence. She instantly panics and runs up to Alicia's room. And Alicia is not there and is nowhere to be found. There was a note left in her bedroom that said, I ran away. I will be back, I swear. I'm sorry. Signed, Alicia. Jessica calls the police then, and the next day, a silver alert was issued for Alicia. A silver alert is activated when an elderly, developmentally, or cognitively impaired person has gone missing and is determined to be at risk. It's believed that she left on foot sometime during the night to meet up with somebody that she was talking with online. Authorities searched through Alicia's bedroom, and they found that she had taken her MacBook Pro her phone, body spray, some of her makeup, and a comic book. She did not take the charges for her devices, so they did believe that she had planned on coming back at some point. It said that on September 19th of 2019, in the afternoon, Alicia was seen at La Pradera Park, that's one and a half miles from her home, by a friend of hers. There were other witnesses who said that someone that looked like Alicia was talking with an African-American man with tattoos on his hands, neck, and face. But since that day, Alicia has not used any of her social media, and there have not been any sightings of her. It is believed that she was groomed by a predator online. In one of the games that she plays, and that they may even be human trafficking her. Jessica has not given up on finding Alicia, though. She posts flyers and has multiple social media pages that I will link down below. 
She uses these pages to spread awareness of Alicia's disappearance and also to get awareness out to other parents that have kids that use social media. Because there honestly is so many predators online that are willing to take advantage of kids, adults, honestly anybody that they feel like they can have some power over and convince them of whatever narrative that they're trying to put out there. Today, Alicia would be 18 years old, and I hope that she's able to be reunited with her family. Alicia is very loved and missed, and no family deserves to have to sit here and wonder and hope that their child is okay. The National Center of Missing and Exploited Children have also made a progress photo of what Alicia may look like at age 17. If you know where she is or the person that did this to her, please speak up. She was an innocent young girl that is very loved and missed. There is a $20,000 reward if you have any information about where she is or what happened to her. But I'm going to link all of the numbers for the Glendale Police Department and all the different numbers, social media, all that, that you can reach out to if you know anything. If I forgot anything, just comment down below. But thank you so much for watching today's video, and I will see you all next time. Bye.